Kyrgyzstan. Wow. The water crossing from Tajikistan through the mountains on the Premier Highway down to Kyrgyzstan was very interesting with about 20-30k of no man's land between the exit of Tajikistan and then when we got into Kyrgyzstan. And we arrived in Saritash just across the border of Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Good morning from Kyrgyzstan. First morning here in Kyrgyzstan and we are just getting the bikes ready to get on the road, holding the chain and let me show you something. The highest mountain over there is over 7,000 meters above sea level high. Amazing. and stayed at this really cute homestay where they just spoiled us rotten with really fresh food and kindness of strangers again and the mountains behind were just stunning we watched the sunset overlooking these crazy insane beautiful mountains and spent the night there and then the next morning again waking up in the middle of nowhere and looking at these mountains it was so beautiful and then the next day we rode to the capital called Osh in Kyrgyzstan with a chai pit stop on the way. And then in Osh we again went to the bazaar to stack up on snacks because then the next day we wanted to ride to another town which was sort of in the middle of nowhere and we didn't really know exactly if we're going to make it there or if there's going to be some unexpected happenings along the way again. We are here on the bazaar in Osh. There is a local. Hey, Crystal, what are you doing? <laughs> so this here is the bazaar in Osh that is pretty famous. It's been here for 2,000 years, and it used to be important, uh, an important place. Also, Osh was super important for the Silk Road. Here, this city and this bazaar is 2000 years old. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I'll show you around now. Yeah. <laughs> So we are here at a pit stop in Kyrgyzstan. The client is doing some research. What's your research? That you uh, well, it looks like we're going to drive through an area where there's 400,000 acres of wild growing cannabis. In Kazakhstan? It's between Kazakhstan and here. So meanwhile, so we're doing really important research here. <laughs> meanwhile, Christo got up to some other mischief. What, what are you doing? It's important. We leave him alone for two minutes and this is what happens. I need to buy a chocolate bar, <laughs> and I found this. There's a lot of weight in this, a lot of chocolate. That's how I roll. Uh, so you walked off. We're we here in this little plenty of chocolate private room having lunch, yeah. and it's a little bit rainy today. And he walks off. There's a little supermarket over here. He walks off. Says I'm going to go buy a chocolate bar, and he comes back with a huge box of chocolates, and now he's in chocolate heaven. We do still have quite a while to ride, so this is going to be a good, good not fuel. Not bad, but not amazing either. <laughs> and of course, along the way, we did have another flat tire. And this time, Crystal's bike, Fernando Fantastico, 
decided to have a little bit of a sore foot, so he had a flat tire and right in front of a tire place. Amazing. And we have another flat tire. This time, Christos' bike, and it's very lucky because he broke down right in front of a tire place. Check this. Very lucky. And after we got the tire fixed, we kept riding again and the roads again started to go pretty off-roady, pretty bad. Lots of mud, lots of puddles, lots of potholes and I definitely stacked it <laughs> a few times. I dropped my bike into a big mud puddle at one stage too and because the roads kept getting pretty bad, Google didn't really recognize these roads. So it was really hard to know how far we can go. So we just kept riding. We just said, look, let's not <laughs> try and make it again to the next village because we might never make it. Instead, let's just keep riding. And when the sun sets, we have our camping gear. We just set up a tent somewhere. So that's what we did. We kept riding and it was actually a really beautiful ride through the middle of nowhere. There was nothing except nature, mountains and yurts. So every now and then there were yurts with people and some cows and kids running around and just pretty, pretty amazing actually. Horses, lots of horses. And it was really wild and raw and beautiful. And so once the sun started to set, we just set up our tents next to a group of yurts. Well, we got caught in the dark, so we're pitching a tent here. Is there a It's going to be pretty nice to wake up here. here. A little muddy, but this is going to be really beautiful, I think. The kids are super cute just looking. Very cute. She's still helping. It's very cute. Have you got some helpers, Krista? Yeah. <laughs> so cute. Kids are helping blowing up the mattress. And the kids in this little yurt village, they were so excited. They came over and just looked at our stuff and helped us with the tent and, and touched our mattresses and it was really adorable. We gave them some chocolates and we just had the most fun interaction that was all using sign language and we were very unprepared we didn't really have any food or <laughs> any water left but we survived and the night was very cold it started to get really cold so we just put on everything that we had and we froze our buns off just this serenity was again one of my highlights despite the lack of sleep it was one of my memories that I will always treasure. And then we made our way towards Bishkek, the capital of Kyrgyzstan. Again, the roads were pretty bad for still quite a few hours. And then we rode to the border of Kazakhstan, our last stop on this part of this journey, the Silk Road. As we rode across the border, I couldn't believe it that we have made it this far. 
from Switzerland all the way along the Silk Road to Kazakhstan. And King Giorgio, my bike made it even after the accident in Tajikistan. He made it across the border and I was super overwhelmed and a little bit emotional about the whole thing. And we had maybe two, three hours left to go to Almaty, where our final stop was. And probably an hour from the border, King Giorgio had another flat tire. Okay, so we are about two hours away from Almaty, maybe an hour across the border from Kazakhstan and King Giorgio decided to have another four foot flat tire again and we don't have anything else now to fix this four foot before we fixed him one and so I had the police up here, I had the police help us and stop this van and I asked her can you take me to Almaty in the van and then there's a mechanic in Almaty so well, good news is King George did make it to Kazakhstan, he just didn't make it to Almaty. And I have some other bikes here. King Giorgio getting out of the truck. All these people are helping. Water bike finish. Water bike problem. Uh, hotel. Once we hit Almaty, we went out with some local friends, had the most amazing dinner, and then spent a few days just checking out Almaty and eating the most amazing food. I think after being on a bike for so long, having all these options and restaurants the food just suddenly is like, oh my god, this is so good. Awesome, so we're having it, and then we're going to go drink a little bit. Yes, Alan. Okay, this is a video thing. Hi. This is it. Last stop. Добро пожаловать в Казахстан! Да, exactly. What she said. I said, welcome to Казахстан. Yeah. Welcome to Казахстан. Казахстан. Yes, the Казахстан. This is our last night here together in Almaty. We it dropped the so bike beautiful. today. We look a little bit tired. Everyone is a little bit bruised, a bit battered, and very hungry. And we met up with Altina, who lives here, and we're gonna go to karaoke tonight and celebrate our trip along the Silk Road. And today we dropped the bikes. Off, it was very sad to say goodbye to the bikes, but we had an amazing trip. It's pretty awesome. Round two complete. Round two complete. Round three coming up very shortly. <laughs>
whole journey, reflecting on the journey along the Silk Road from Switzerland to Kazakhstan was one of my most incredible, most challenging also adventures. And there are so many memories that I will treasure and so many moments with strangers, so many moments of humanity that I will always carry in my heart. And I can't wait for the next part, which is going to be through South America.